I recently earned the CRTP certification from Altered Security. If you're not familiar, that stands for the Certified Red Team Professional Certification. Out of all of the certs by Altered Security, this one is their most well-known. This was probably gonna be the heaviest hitter for HR purposes. If you are looking for something to fill that gap, this one would be the most well-known. In this video, I'm just gonna break down my experience with it, give you a bit of a review on it if it's something that you are considering. So first of all, who would I consider this certification for? Well, as Altered Security says in their own messaging, it is for red and blue teamers. So I would say really, if you are someone that is working on the defensive side, or if you are getting your start on the red teaming side, this one would make a lot of sense. But I think also beyond that, there's a lot of groups where it would also make sense. So if you're trying to break into the field of cybersecurity, I think this is a pretty solid one. So maybe you have OSCP, or even if you don't, and this one is very approachable from people of all skill levels, all backgrounds. I think it even says beginners edition in the lab is meant to be approachable for complete beginners. Now, in terms of the technical level of the material, I would place it like one step above OSCP in terms of how technical the content is. With that being said though, the exam is much easier than OSCP. So that's why these two things don't always correlate, right? You can have more advanced material but it'd be a lot easier of a certification to obtain because with OSCP, the tricky part is that it's testing your enumeration. So even though you might understand all of the technical material, applying it and actually passing that exam is a different story. In this one, what I love about all of the exams from Altered Security, at least out of the three that I have so far, what I've experienced is that they're not really trying to trick you on the exams. It's very fair. They're not testing enumeration, to be fair, like offensive security is with their OSCP certification. Instead, they're just testing you on the material itself. So what I found is that if you go through the lab, you take good notes, you're pretty much going to pass the exam. Now, there are some common pitfalls that people make when they're going for this certification, which I will address later on in the video. But let me first just say, if you're looking to break into the field and you know maybe add this to your portfolio on your journey to getting into cybersecurity in 2025 and the coming years, definitely check the link down in the description below. Fill out a brief survey and I will help get you on the path. So now just diving right into the certification itself, one of the biggest advantages of altered security is the lab environments that they have. Their labs are always really, really sick. They got like a, a huge lab environment for this one as well with mimicking an enterprise environment in many ways. The biggest difference is that they don't have like advanced EDRs and all the bells and whistles that you would be encountering in an actual assessment or something like that because it is more geared towards beginners. But what's really cool, and I didn't expect this about the cert, is not only do they teach you the Active Directory stuff, but they actually will explain to you how they modified all the tools to bypass antivirus and things like that. And here comes to the first pitfall that I see a lot of people make, especially more beginners that try to go for this certification, is that they will skip over some of the OPSEC stuff. What I mean by that is when you run some of these tools, there's certain obfuscation tooling and and stuff like that that you need to run beforehand and if you don't then it's going to get blocked by out of the box antivirus it's going to get blocked by amz it's going to get blocked by windows defender different stuff like that so you really do want to pay attention especially when you're formulating your notes from the material to include anything like that that comes before actually running the command otherwise what you're going to find is when you get on the exam you know, and you try to skip those steps that your stuff's going to be getting blocked by antivirus. So make sure you're doing it exactly in the way that they teach you in the course there and add that to your notes as well. Now, one of the, another amazing benefits to this certification and all their certs is that the price point is very, very good. This is a very accessible price point and a tremendous value for the money. A lot of certs out there are super expensive. Even if you want to go for OSCP nowadays, they funnel everyone into their subscription models. So you're looking at at least $1,000 for the year. With this, they, they want you to pass on your first try and stuff. So if you take it, you pass on your first try, you can get like 30 day lab time. You know, I did it in 30 days and it's only a few hundred dollars. And now here's a caveat that I got to say with myself is that I've been a red teamer for many years and I've also been a pen tester for many years as well, doing like internal assessments and things like that. So I'm already very familiar with Active Directory. In fact, all of the attacks that they taught in the course 
were ones that I've done in real life already. So a lot of it was treading familiar ground. Now, the thing about this certification is it's very PowerShell heavy, which I think is good to know, like understand how to do this stuff from the PowerShell side. There's a lot of misconceptions about PowerShell in the modern day in, in 2024, 2025. People think that PowerShell is dead and that's not completely true. It really depends on your target. It really depends on the environment. Even though there's all this like insight and logging and stuff into PowerShell commands. Well, for one thing, there's ways to like sidestep that, to bypass it, to blind that and things like that, which they teach you in the course, which is really great. But also, even though, you know, they might be monitoring a lot of the PowerShell stuff in some environments, and I've seen this in my real assessments is some of them will not. And if they do, they're drowning in alerts. So maybe a lot of your PowerShell stuff more than you might think might fly under the radar. So it's still very relevant, I think, in the modern day to learn the PowerShell way of doing things. I think a lot of people have this misconception about red teaming and things like that to think that, oh, you have to do everything custom. You gotta write your own custom code for every little thing. And it's like, yeah, sure, there's certain use cases for that. And you know, it is the best OPSEC way, but you don't always need to do that. Sometimes that's completely overkill. So if you don't need to do that and you're doing that, well, you're wasting time and especially on red team engagements, right? You're not actually the TTP, right? Like you're emulating them, but you're having a, a time Time crunch, right? You don't have like infinite time like a lot of these TTPs do, right? So I'm saying TTPs, I mean ATPs, events, persistent threat actor. TTPs would be like the uh, specific methodology and tools and stuff that they're using. But anyhow, you're not actually the ATP and you don't have infinite time. So it does matter. You want to be doing the least OPSEC thing that you can get away with because it's going to be faster and it's going to allow you to deliver a better product to the client ultimately. But Back on the topic of the actual course and the exam, one thing that's nice about it is the scope is pretty small when you go and take the test. I don't think I'm revealing too much information by saying that, but it's not gonna be like nearly the same level of scoping as if you were dumped on like an, a real world red team engagement or something like that. So it is pretty straightforward what the attack path is, at least I thought so. Because like I said, they're not trying to send you down rabbit holes. They're not trying to test your enumeration or trick you in any way. They're literally just testing you on the material. So what they typically say is that they expect, cause you got 24 hours for the exam. Uh, if you didn't know. And uh, it's similar to OSCP in that sense. Nice thing is it's not proctored. So you don't have someone watching your screen. It's very, very casual. You just click a button that says start exam, spins up the environment, and then that starts your 24 hour timer. And then you get an additional 48 hours for writing the report. Now they estimate it to take you, I think, 18 hours, maybe it's like 16 to 18 hours. I might be slightly off on that. Somewhere around that region is how long they think it's gonna take you to complete the exam. Now, big caveat here, like I said, I have a lot of experience with red teaming and internal pen tests and things like that. So I've done these attacks and stuff before. For me personally, I finished the exam in a little under five hours, but I would estimate, I'm sure if you don't have a lot of prior knowledge going in, it's gonna take you probably closer to their estimate. Let's say at least 14 hours. Like for example, I didn't have a ton of experience going into their ADCS certification. And that I think took me 12 hours. So maybe if you're coming in here fairly new, maybe it'll take you 12 to 14 hours. Now, one of the things that I'll say, and I said this on the, when I did the review of the CESP certification by Altered Security, by the way, go ahead and check out that video on my channel uh, where I break down the CESP ADCS certification by Altered Security. But one of the observations that I had about that is in their marketing, they say, you know, you have three options, right? You can buy the 30 day lab, 60 day lab, 90 day lab. Well, exact same thing with the CR. RTP, you have those three options. And in their marketing, so what they say is that 30 days is for people that are advanced, people like me that have more experience in this stuff. And they say 60 days is if you're like junior level, you have some experience and 90 days is for complete beginner. Well, I would very strongly disagree with this, to be honest. And the reason for that, and don't just take my word for it, right? I have experience, but I have also, you know, I'm mentoring people that have this certification as well. And even those people coming in as beginners were able to do it in 30 days. I think that 30 days is completely doable in order to get through all the material. If you're a little bit concerned, I would go with 60 days, but I think 90 days personally is just way too big of a time scale. Like you don't need 90 days. It doesn't take you that long to get through the lab. For me personally, I blew through the lab in like three or four days. You know, caveat is I've done this stuff before, but even my brother that I was helping get the certification, he was coming in as a beginner and it took him about 30 days to go through the material. So like I said, when I was doing the ADCS one, I was very new to that and it took me a month, a little less than a month, maybe three weeks or so to get through the material. So I think for most people, 30 days is completely fine. Let's just say you have like a family and a lot of outside commitments, 
you know, maybe you can go with the 60 days if you just want to give yourself a bit more of a net. But even 30 days, I would say, like, you have a big enough net. But those are the two considerations. I definitely wouldn't recommend going with the 90 days, at least in my personal opinion from what I've observed. But yeah, I think it was a pretty fair exam, and I highly recommend the certification from a learning standpoint. I mean, I think it says, you know, it speaks to the certification, the fact that even though I don't need it at all whatsoever from an HR standpoint, I still choose to take the certification because I know that like the quality is there and the value of the learning stuff. Like even if you put all of the HR stuff aside, the learning value that you're going to get from the cert is so great that even I'm willing to take it. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. You know, have you taken it? Let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to fuel the discussion there. And uh, also, you know, like I said, if you're on this path, you're on this journey, maybe you have like one or two certifications thinking about adding this one, trying to break into the field because it is pretty tough right now. Go ahead and check the link down in the description below, fill out a brief survey, and I will be getting you on the path.